Yes, Sean, World Bank growth projections were maintained at 6.4%. And of course, that is expected to temper slightly by 2017 to 6.2%. So 6.4% for 2016. And for 2017, it's 6.2% accounting for the lack of election spending which had provided an additional boost for the economy this year and that's also despite the difficulties in the global economic environment posed by well number one china's economic slowdown and of course the lower than anticipated growth of more developed economies we have here today mr carl kendrick chua a senior economist at the world bank to give us the details about that Mr. Uh, Chua, um, what does this mean, a 6.4% growth for the Philippines? What does this mean for us in, uh, at the time of growing challenges in the region? Okay, 6.4% um, growth is actually a very good number. Mm -hmm. um, why we think this is possible is because we have record low inflation. Uh, we think that the private uh, sector uh, acceleration of PPP projects uh, and also uh, budgeted projects in the government uh, would be able to support this growth despite the slower uh, external demand. Uh, but the, I think the key challenge here is maintaining and sustaining this growth uh, and making the quality of growth be felt more by the poor Filipino people. So that, that would mean keeping up to this 6-7% uh, uh, growth for the next uh, 25 years. That is one generation. Uh, what this means is that uh, we can eradicate poverty uh, in the next uh, 25 years if we sustain this growth and make sure this is, uh, uh, reaches uh, the poor. Uh, this is what we call inclusive growth. Yes, you mentioned that one of your recommendations is also to um, make this growth, take this growth further down the poorer sectors of the economy. And one of those recommendations you mentioned was tr uh, to liberalize rice trade. How do you expect this to happen? What do you recommend um, for the government to do this? Okay, uh, more broadly, uh, I think uh, there's no question that this economy can grow at a very uh, fast rate. Uh, what I mean by fast is uh, 6%. And even 7 to 8% is possible. We have seen the private sector growing by that amount. Mm -hmm. uh, if the government had spent the budget as planned, then the growth could easily top uh, 7 or even 8%. But uh, what, what would be more important going forward is how this growth is felt by the people. Mm -hmm. And we have proposed uh, four key thematic reforms. Uh, the first is enhancing competition so that people will share the benefits of growth through lower prices and better quality. Uh, the second is uh, simplifying regulations, uh, especially starting a business. So anyone who wants to start a business, expand, grow, and create jobs can do it easily. Mm -hmm. uh, the third is securing property rights. So people will uh, feel secure and have a means to invest on their land or property. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, investing more in uh, irrigation, farm-to-market roads, uh, road systems, uh, education, uh, and health. Uh, in terms of rice, this is one of the uh, key uh, food requirements of over 100 uh, million uh, Filipinos. And what we see here is that although the Philippines has done a great job in producing rice, mm -hmm. uh, despite doubling of population, despite the frequent uh, weather disturbances, mm -hmm. uh, this is causing rice prices to, uh, to be very high. In fact, double compared to our neighbors. So what we feel would be uh, a need for this uh, country is to rebalance our, our, our uh, rice policy so that we can uh, import rice cheaper, put uh, cheaper rice uh, on the table of Filipinos, and uh, eradicate poverty and hunger much faster. These are two equally important uh, inclusive uh, growth agendas that uh, we need to take more seriously. Okay, lastly, sir, uh, briefly, you mentioned about uh, um, improvement in tax revenues, but not necessarily uh, tax hikes. Uh, how do you see this going about? Okay, so the government has launched the Ambition Natin 2040, which basically uh, dreams of um, making the Philippines a higher middle income country in one generation, eradicating poverty. So uh, what this means is that we need to finance all these inclusive growth uh, programs, uh, such as better roads to combat congestion, making sure that everyone is healthy, educated, and uh, can be world class. And these will cost money, although the government has proven that it can raise this money by uh, improving governance, uh, strengthening tax administration. Uh, alone, these two will not be enough to generate the substantial money to finance these investments. So we are looking at uh, more uh, reforms in tax policy. And by tax policy reform, we are not uh, recommending new taxes, but simply reviewing, updating, and looking at where the current tax system can be improved so that it becomes 
faster, equitable, and more efficient for everyone. And this is the strategy that many countries uh, have pursued, and we think this is a good strategy for the Philippines. Okay, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Okay, Sean, um, it's be it'll be good to see how will that be tackled in the forthcoming elections by uh, the results of the elections by the second half of the year, Sean.